welcome to my views and news these days i'm doing uh, not lots of videos because i'm traveling but uh, hopefully from uh, tuesday i'll resume full scale work and i'll be able to update you more about the situation in the horn of africa uh three new stories for you first one is from a zone of the amhara region not known for being uh, a stronghold of fan of fighters but gradually fan of fighters have expanded their control there and last night they entered this zone and they stormed a prison there secondly where was isasevki yesterday when a meeting of igad was held in djibouti Eritrean president was in nowhere to be seen. Thirdly, UAE and uh, Sudanese government are at the loggerheads. UAE has expelled uh, Sudanese uh, military attaché and cultural attaché. What happened? What is the reason behind this diplomatic escalation between the UAE? United Arab Emirates and the Sudanese government and military led by Abdul Fatal Burhan, the general. Firstly, words uh, Ago Avi zone of the Amhara region, where Agos live in large number. Agos uh, uh, have been complaining, some groups have been complaining that they are marginalized in the Amhara region. Um, and some Argo groups uh, started armed struggle in the Amhara region. Uh, Argos came and uh, fighting for years. Though uh, Amhara, uh, some Amhara groups say that these groups were actually created by the EPRDF, by the TPLF. But there are uh, tension between Argo and Amhara because I talked to both of them, by the way. And Agos are not happy with the way they are being treated in the Amhara region. And uh, since the start of uh, conflict in the Amhara region, we have been seeing that uh, the region remained largely zone, Ago Avi zone remained largely stable. Uh, there was no fighting in the zone. Ago militias were operating, but Fano fighters were not carrying out any attacks. In Argo region, things changed. Uh, military was trying to pit Argo militias against uh, Fano fighters. Things changed a few weeks ago, and then we saw that Fano started attacks inside Argo Avizon. We have seen several attacks in Argo Avizon now. Argo Avizon is crucial because uh, one of the main roads leading to Gajam, leading to Bahirdar capital, passes through Argo Avizon. But uh, we cannot say, still, we cannot say that Fano fighters are in a strong position in Agua zone. Though they captured, I think, Ayugugusa. Ayugugusa is under their control, if I am not wrong. They captured this uh, area a few months ago. Since then, they have been in Ayugugusa. And uh, the Ago elders there, they have been asking the military to expel Fano fighters from Ayugugusa. Fano fighters are still there, reportedly. Now, last night, Fano uh, fighters entered a key town in Agu Avi zone. The town is situated along a main road, uh, which connects Bahirdar with Agu Avi zone. Dangala is the name of the town. It's situated in Agu Avi zone. And uh, Fano fighters launched a very quick operation in Dangala. They stormed a prison. They released uh, dozens of prisoners. And they just uh, returned. Very a uh, blitzkrieg type of uh, quick operation was launched by foreign fighters in Agua Bison. The same type of operation was launched in Voldia a few uh, days ago when they entered Voldia uh, and they freed uh, hundreds of prisoners. Not a single statement was issued by the government confirming the statement, but it happened. And uh, attacks on prisons are now becoming very regular. These attacks are helping Fano fighters a lot because people believe that Fano fighters don't ditch their comrades. That they care about their comrades if Fano fighters are arrested, detained, in prison. So they are 
commanders don't ditch them they fight for them they release them they attack prisons overall these attacks on prisons are leading to more support for fano in public attack in dangala by fano on a prison detention center it has been confirmed secondly we were saw a work yesterday when igad summit was held in djibouti igad leaders met in djibouti yesterday to discuss sudan uh, almost all not all but almost all major leaders were there too from Ethiopia Pim Abi was there from Kenya William Ruto uh, Al Burhan was there to Hamati delivered a speech to so virtually he participated uh, no one from South Sudan South Sudan and Uganda sent representatives Selva Kir Mosavini did not attend this uh, uh, summit Ismail Omar hosting Djibouti's president uh, Hassan Sheikh was there too from uh, Somalia Isa uh, Sevuki was nowhere to be seen. While we know that Isa uh, Sevuki showed interest in reactivating IGAD, he has been missing from IGAD's recent meetings. Why? The agenda was Sudan, and the two uh, the leaders met, and uh, after that, Dr. Verkne, IGAD Secretary General, issued a statement saying the two sides, Sudanese sides, had agreed on finding a solution. uh towards a cessation of hostilities agreement but let's see what happens why is that eritrea missing eritrea when isasa who he visited kenya a few months ago he showed interest he talked about the need for reactivation of igad but now when igad is active he's nowhere to be seen i think uh, isasa who he maybe believes that alone he has clout in uh, sudan and he has clout by the way burhan visited eritrea twice juba peace deal secretary has visited eritrea a few weeks ago uh, eritrea shares border with uh, sudan and eritrea participated in a meeting held in egypt about uh, uh, sudan situation Eritrea maybe does not feel that it should to be at Igad. Either Igad is insignificant for Eritrea, or Eritrea wants to be part of other mechanisms uh, which are underway uh, for the conflict resolution in Sudan, like the one in Egypt, or the one. which has been launched by eritrea itself eritrea by the way has taken sides now it is not neutral in this conflict eritrea supporting sudanese military eritrea supporting uh, the peace deal signatories of darfur too. it's not neutral in this war but from igad is asaboki was missing yesterday thirdly we were the rising escalation rising diplomatic tension between the uae and uh, sudan a few days ago a top sudanese general yasir al arta criticized uae's government he accused uae of backing rapid support forces calling uae a mafia he said uae is following in the footsteps of evil footsteps of evil very strong uh, language used by yasir al arta against uae Uh, the ue has been backing rapid support forces for months but this statement was the first statement from sudanese military criticizing uh, the united arab emirates government now ue is responding united arab emirates has uh, expelled some sudanese diplomats uh, sudanese ambassador to the ue was summoned and reportedly uh, sudanese military attache to ue has been declared persona non grata his deputy also declared persona non grata cultural attache persona non grata they have been told to leave the country ue obviously not happy with the criticism uh, 
directed at uh, it by Yasir Alata Sunni's journal. That is why UAE took this action. We have been seeing reports from the EU, from some other players, criticizing UAE's role in the Sudanese conflict. Uh, UAE so far is supporting rapid support forces and it has not withdrawn its support. But it's not happy with the Sudanese government's criticism. That is why Sudanese uh, cultural military have been expelled. They have been told to leave the country in the UAE. Thank you for watching.